All right, then let's start. So welcome everybody to this presentation today. I really appreciate you being here and I know how precious your time is. And I really promise you that it's gonna be absolutely worth your time. But before we jump in, if you don't know me, I'm gonna give you a brief introduction about who I am. I've been in marketing for almost two, 12 years now and I've been lucky to learn marketing by working as a marketing executive for some of the great companies like Procter & Gamble and Google. And I was recently heading global marketing at Tango here in Silicon Valley. If you don't know Tango, Tango is one of the um, uh, leading video communication apps that has around 400 million members globally. I also hold a, a, an, I also hold an MBA in marketing and have my own startup actually called CineClick, which is a leading online cinema guide in the Middle East. And recently I started the Mobile Growth Academy uh, to teach mobile startups globally on how to properly market and grow their mobile app here in Silicon Valley and in, around the world. And I'm actually part of a founding team of a new venture capital firm here in Silicon Valley where we're going to invest in middle, middle Eastern startups and help them expand into the U.S. and globally. I specialize in helping tech companies in systematically and predictably attract and convert and retain users by using new and innovative marketing strategies that require minimal budget. So if you don't have a lot of budget, I can definitely help you with that because I don't believe in big budgets for startups. But anyways, enough about me. I know you're not here to hear me talk about myself. Here's what the agenda is about for today. It's all about you. I'll be showing you how to systematically and predictably attract tons of users to any product not just a mobile app. This is gonna be applicable to any product, whether you have an existing product now or a future product, if you have a mobile app or not. What you're gonna to learn today is something you're gonna apply in every business you have. It's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna show you as well how to implement the marketing system that runs 24 seven for you. Even if you have zero or very limited marketing budget, that's gonna be something that's gonna run even when you're sleeping. Because what you wanna be doing is have a marketing system that runs for you even when you're not activating it, even when you're not there to run it. I'm gonna also be showing you growth hack ideas and how to delight new users and retain them in your app. And at the end, I'm gonna invite you to attend a special program that shows you exactly how to implement all this in the quickest and the most affordable way possible. Now you know that your job as a marketer is pretty simple. What you need to do is attract users and keep them using your app on an ongoing basis. But the reality is time is always against you. You're always under the pressure of running low on cash or having high expenses and not enough revenue. That's if you have any revenue in the first place. So time is against you. And as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, as a marketer, there are three things you need to focus on to maximize your chances of success. First thing is you need to have access to money, whether it's your own money or somebody else's money, like an investor's money. Second thing is you need to attract the smartest people so they can tell you what to do, so they can advise you and guide you on what to do. And the third thing is you need to avoid doing common mistakes and instead implement the best practices, proven tactics that are um, applied by successful apps and successful businesses. This is the shortcut to success. A lot of people actually try to reinvent the wheel and start from scratch. What you need to be doing is try to reverse engineer success and try to implement best practices that you see around you. Now that said, unfortunately, a lot of companies fail and end up dying. And a key fundamental reason why so many fail, so many companies fail is that they have a system whereby they have an idea and they go and build a prototype around it. And after a few iterations, they're ready to launch. And this process usually takes anywhere between two to six months. And that's a lot of valuable time before they invest in marketing and before they start doing marketing. And when they do the marketing, what they end up doing is they use a typical marketing system that everybody else is using. They start copying each other and copy a system that's failing in most of the cases. 
And it goes something like this. So here's what everybody else is doing and what you should be avoiding. And I'm going to show you in a moment what, should, what you should be doing instead. First is they come up with messages and they ask friends and family or they push these messages with ads onto people and they use social media and they send people to the app stores for them to download the app. And they expect a lot of people to start using the app, but they end up with a very low conversion, which is around 1%. And this is where the marketing stops. They don't have a retention plan in place to keep users coming back. So they rush back to the beginning of the funnel, to the first step to start acquiring new users. And that's a major mistake. They don't have a system in place. The system that they need to have is a marketing system that delivers results in a predictable and inconsistent manner. The marketing system that you need to think of is a, a, a way to fix the leakages at every stage of the funnel. Let me explain what I mean. You need to map out the user life cycle, which is the different stages a user go through from somebody who has no idea that your app exists all the way to somebody using your app on a regular basis. So let's say 10,000 people are aware of your app. Out of this, these 10,000 people, 2,000 people are interested. From those, only 500 install the app. Now, you have to understand that not everybody who installs the app actually registers on the app. Only 300 people out of the 500 register in the app. And from those, 100 people end up using it on day two. And then out of those, 20 people end up using it on day 30. So your job is to fix the leakages at every stage of this funnel. And this is summarized in four stages. The first stage is called positioning. The second one is called acquisition. The third one is activation. And the fourth one is the retention. These are the four stages of growth. Every successful app you see out there, every successful business you see out there goes through these four stages. So positioning is actually four steps. You start by identifying a niche, a small segment of users you want to go after. You identify their key benefits. Then you, dry, you draft attractive headlines, and you start using these, these headlines in marketing communication. And in your marketing, the choice of words really decides whether your marketing is going to live or die. So if you're trying to pull in more people to your website or to your app store listing, you need to write attractive headlines that get clicks. So the words you use in your marketing has huge impact on how successful your marketing is and eventually your app is. Let me show you. Here's why it's important. Imagine you get 10,000 people to see a headline of an article or an ad that you wrote. Now, a bad headline converts around 0.05% of users. So that leads to only five users. Now, on the other hand, it's realistic for a good headline to convert on average 2% of users. And this leads to 200 users. So for the same exposure, you're getting 200 users instead of five users. You can get 40 times more users for the same exposure, for the same budget, just by improving the choice of words that you are drafting the headlines with. That's huge. So imagine how much money you're leaving on the table just because you're not paying attention to writing good headlines. And that's the power of good copywriting and good headlines. And the most important rule to writing better headlines is to remember it's never about you. People don't care about you. People don't care about your business or your app. It's all about them. It's all about their needs. It's all about their wants, their desires, how you can help them solve their problems. So you need to focus your copy and headlines on not on the features of your app, but instead on the benefits users can expect from it. Let me show you some examples. Here are three examples that um, I want to show you. Airbnb trusts our app to handle the 30,000 transactions a day. Or this app helped 20,000 pregnant women find gynecologists in their area. Or need help with money? There's an app for that. It could be as simple as this. So when you use headlines properly, you start instantly increasing the, the growth of your app without spending any extra dollars. The next stage is the acquisition stage. Now that you invested time in drafting proper headlines, it's time to start acquiring users. And the question you need to ask yourself is, how can you convert users for free 
in a consistent and repeatable way. Forget about spending money on marketing. Think on, think of how can you start acquiring users for free? Because here's the reality of this situation. It will cost you on average $3 to acquire a user these days. And the price keeps getting higher and higher. In fact, it's actually twice higher than two years ago. So unless you have a lot of budget to spare to spend and then start investing in marketing and in uh, advertising, paying for acquisition is not really sustainable. So use paid acquisition only when you have a lot of budget to burn or when you fix your leakages, when you know your product actually works. And instead, what you need to be doing is to rely on free acquisition channels to drive users to your app, especially in the beginning, especially when you're launching and you're starting up your business. Here are different ideas of free marketing that you can implement in your business. You can think of growth hacks. In fact, I'm going to show you a few ones. Content marketing is a great way to attract users and traffic to your business and to your app. Virality and app virality, where you get people to, to, to share your app with their friends. App store optimization, where you rank high your app in the stores for certain keywords. I'm going to also explain that in a moment. You can um, invest in blogs and reach out to certain bloggers. SEO, you can invest in um, PR, but not pay for PR agencies. Actually, you can think of creative ways to get people to, to write about your app. Uh, referral marketing, social media, cross marketing, when you identify an app that complements you and then you cross market yourself with them. Um, certain endorsements, core marketing deals, sweepstakes, trials, partnerships is another great idea to spread your brand to thousands and thousands of people. Email marketing is still very big. You can run competitions or you can just attend events and start marketing your app and your business uh, inside events and meetups. But because we don't have a lot of time in this presentation, I will focus on two important ones, and these are growth hacks and apps or optimization. Let me start with a growth hack. And a great way to drive more users to your app is to hack WhatsApp, to hack the network of WhatsApp of 900 million users. I know it works because I did it very successfully at Tango. Here's what we did, actually. We ran a WhatsApp campaign where we encouraged users to invite their friends. And the way it worked is uh, you tap on a WhatsApp banner, a WhatsApp invite, that sends the user to a WhatsApp, to actually WhatsApp, where they select whether they want to send a message to a group or certain individuals. And then when they tap on a certain person or group, the message comes pre-filled with the text and the link to install Tango. Here's how you do it. Here's the deep link to make this happen. Write WhatsApp, colon, forward slash, forward slash, send, question mark, text, equal. And then you replace the text in green with your own text. Uh, I don't know if you know about the app called IMO, but IMO is one of the many apps that actually uses WhatsApp to um, encourage virality and referral. Here's an example of how they, they're doing it. Instead of the green text they're writing, I just use IMO to do a free video, free HD video call. You might be interested in it too. Download it from here, and then they have a bit.ly link that links back to the app from the source. So that's a great way to start acquiring users and then increasing the virality using WhatsApp. And it's absolutely for free. Another great idea is to use um, App Store optimization. So I'm not sure if you know what ASO is. ASO, which stands for App Store optimization, is the process of improving the visibility of a mobile app in the app stores. This means, in simple terms, is that when people are, certain, are searching for certain keywords in the app store, your app starts showing high in the, in the search results. So how do you do this? There are actually uh, many, many ways to do it. But the benefits of it is it's actually free. It's absolutely free. It's a 24-7 source of organic installs for you. You should start learning how to do it. Um, and the other thing is that there are a lot of apps who are still not doing it. So you can stand out in the market and start beating competition simply by focusing on ASO and optimizing your apps in the different app stores. Now, as I said, there are a lot of features, a lot of ways to actually do proper apps or optimization, as you can see in this mind map. And we don't have a lot of time to go through all of the, uh, the details. But uh, let me show you a few hacks on how you can do it uh, successfully.
So you, start, you need to start thinking on how to expand your app and your business beyond your local markets. And one way to do that is start by picking key markets where you want to expand. These are top spoken languages. Arabic is one of them. Uh, there's English, there's Spanish, there's uh, Portuguese, Mandarin as well. And then once you identify those markets, you start translating these keywords. And uh, to keep things very simple, focus on um, putting the right keywords in the title and on the app store and in the keyword field in the app store and on android put the keywords in the title and then put them in the description so translate these keywords into the, into the languages that you want and then put them in the title and in the description on google play and then the third thing is to localize the screens so once you identify the keyword you translate them you want to localize the screens and here are ways you can translate them. You can use Google Translate, you can use Fiverr, another great resource that allows you to um, get people to do work for you, for starting for five bucks. A great way to do this as well, instead of um, spending money, if you don't want to spend money, you can go to the competitive apps that are actually doing it, go to the stores in different languages, and try to reverse engineer the keywords they're using. I've done it successfully in languages I I, I don't know how to um, speak or write. For example, in, in Hindi, I went over competition. I identified certain keywords. I reverse translated them, and I started using in my app. And obviously, once I had that, because I had in total 56 countries and 56 languages I needed to translate, I could not spend a fortune on this. So I had to find ways and hacks to do this. And that's exactly what I did. And the third thing is to localize the screens. Screens are important to actually get people to convert and become users. So once they land on the App Store listing, it's not really um, uh, necessary for them to install. A lot of people get on the app, but they don't install. So what you want to do is to encourage them to do this. This is where the screens become very important. And uh, you want to localize them so that they, they feel they relate to the app. They feel it's locally relevant for them. I've done it successfully in for, for Arabic, in Saudi uh, specifically, and in Turkish. I've done it actually in many languages, but these are two examples that you can see how I use local flavors, local um, insights from the market. Soccer in Saudi Arabia, for example, to take Tango beyond just the FaceTime and to help people share experiences and how people are actually doing video calls in, uh, in an event that's locally relevant, a soccer game in this, in this case. Um, in Turkish, we use an insight from um, a uh, person, a, a, a guy, actually husband, father, who's on a business trip, and he's FaceTiming his family um, uh, back home. So localizing the screen is another great idea for you to stand out and get people to want to install and discover and start using your app. So this is it for acquisition. Now we're at the third stage of growth funnel, which is called activation. This is a widely overlooked stage of the growth funnel that can drastically hurt your success. So listen up carefully. Activation basically is the process of getting someone who installed your app to register and stick around. So somebody who just installed your app, you want them to register and start using your app. Now, on this chart, you can see that the average app loses around 80% of its active users within only the first three days after the install. That's huge. And one of the reasons why is that most app developers do not have a proper activation process in place. Now, the activation is all about delivering on the promise of the app in the memorable and simple way. You need to delight the user. So they just installed your app. You want to make sure that you deliver a wow experience. You deliver on the promise they expect from this app in a simple and memorable and a delightful uh, way. There are a lot of elements in proper activation plan. You can have, as you said, we have to deliver on the promise uh, of the app that starts from the app store listing. There's the registration process and registration flows. These, their onboarding plans and the product tours, the first time user experience, there's the opt-ins, pop-ups, there's a welcome email, there's an email marketing sequence, and there's the onboarding plan that 
sometimes they extend from day one to day seven. Um, I want to focus only on the onboarding plan for now. I want to show you how to create a killer onboarding plan. Now, there are generally three techniques to create attractive onboarding experiences. You have the progressive onboarding, you have the benefit-oriented onboarding, and then you have the feature-oriented onboarding. I want to talk to you about the progressive onboarding, which is, in my opinion, one of the most important ones. This method is about um, presenting information to users as they start using your app. And this is important. And you want to achieve this with the principle of showing instead of telling. So show and don't tell. What you don't want to do is end up using the splash screens walkthrough with the dots at the bottom that indicate how many times they have to swipe left before they start actually using your app. And this ends up being a boring slide, a set of slides that feels like a memory test of the different things they have to do inside the app. Don't do these things or try to avoid them as much as possible. So instead of telling me, for example, this is an example from Snapchat. Instead of telling me what I can do, Snapchat's first, first time user experience does a great job of walking me through some of the key functionalities of the app. And they show me basic instructions at every step while letting me dive in and try it out for myself. Now, if you don't have Snapchat, I encourage you to install it and go through the onboarding experience and analyze how they do it. If you do have Snapchat, uninstall it or delete it and then reinstall it. You're not going to lose the information on it. And then go through the process so you know exactly how they're doing it. Another great example is from an app called Mailbox. Now, Mailbox has an excellent interactive flow that shows the different features, how they work, and they motivate users by giving them positive feedback like here, you can see a great job. This makes the learning experience fun and emotionally engaging. It's actually a great way to get people to discover the app without making it look like it's an onboarding experience. So this takes us to the fourth stage, which is the last stage of the growth marketing funnel. It's called the retention stage. It's also extremely important stage in, uh, for you to grow and then eventually uh, succeed in the app business. Now, retention is very similar to activation, but it's usually measured on a different time period. And the tactics to use are a little bit different because it's not dependent on education and app discovery, and is more dependent on the stickiness and how you keep users experiencing value on an ongoing basis. So you, start, so you have to start thinking beyond the install. Now they have installed the app, and they start using it on the first day or second day, what is it that you're doing for them to keep using it on a regular basis? What is it that you're doing to, to increase the stickiness of your app? There are a lot of things you can do in actually to increase the retention. There's a push notification. That's huge. There's email marketing. You can give them offers. You can survey them. Um, you can send them thank you messages and thank you letters. You can, you can run certain campaigns, um, offer sweepstakes. You can target happy users. You can ask them to refer um, their friends. Uh, PR, general marketing, and top of mind awareness is very important as well for them to keep remembering your app. Because most likely, if you're not act, if you're not really um, intentional about making them remember your app, they're gonna forget about it. There is the idea of context and how you can place your app in certain contexts in order for them to remember it. Um, there's marketing automation. You can we can run new features, um, certain incentive promotions. There's a lot of things that you could see. I'm going to focus on push notification. Now, push notification are the building blocks of any great mobile marketing strategy, and they are a great way and a great opportunity to establish one-on-one -on -one relationships with your users. So it's very important to do it properly, and it's very important to preserve the trust of the users. Unfortunately, in some product categories, over 60% of users turn off push notifications. In others, it's only 20%. And this is alarming when you're considering push as a primary method of retaining and engaging your mobile users. Now, keep in mind that this data shows push notification on iOS devices alone, because Android devices don't ask users for push permissions. 
But even on Android, the opt-in rate is around 60%, which leaves you 40% of people not opting in for a push notification. So the question is then, how do we influence users to opt in to receive push notifications? Because push notification and push messages are a key fundamental element to retain users on the long term. So how do you get them to actually, to actually opt in? Um, the, the idea is to promote benefits first. There are many ways to do it, but if you focus on this, you can actually increase your rates dramatically. So you, what you need to be doing is promote the benefits of an opt-in before you ask them to opt-in. Here are examples of how an app called Retail Me Not does it. So they explain before they show the pop-up why they should opt-in for the push notification. And um, let me read on the screen. They say, you want us to notify you when your favorite stores have new coupons? And then you say yes, and then you go to the next uh, next screen where they send you the push notification. And the benefit here is I want to know about new coupons, and I want you to tell me about them when there are new coupons. So there's a clear benefit for me. And yes, I'm going to say yes. What I see most apps do, unfortunately, in, in many cases, that they ask for a, the opt-in right when a new user just installed the app. So as soon as the, I open the app, even before I register, I sometimes see the push notification opt-in. And obviously, I don't know the app. I haven't experienced it. I'm going to say no. Um, another great example is from an app called Cluster. It's a news app. They use this tactic to achieve a 60% push enablement rate, which is a push opt-in rate, in the social category, which is almost double of the social category average opt-in rate. And they end up with 100% of the users opting in to the push notification after, after tapping in on Notify Me, which is their pre-ask page. So they do this in a beautiful way that explains the benefit of why people should opt in. And if you do this, which is a, an absolutely free way to increase retention by getting people to opt in, you can dramatically increase your retention rate. It's a free way. Again, it's a free way. All you have to do is think about what is the benefit a user can expect from the, from the opt-in and then time it properly so that when you are asking them to opt-in, they already saw the benefit and they are more likely to, to uh, accept and then opt-in opt in for the push notification. So to summarize, here are the four stages of the growth funnel. We went through the positioning, the acquisition, the activation and the retention. Now, I'm not sure why you showed up today. Um, it could be because you're not getting enough users to your app, or it could be um, you're new to mobile marketing and you're not sure where, you, where, where to start in marketing. Or maybe you're just looking for a quick and proven way to increase your growth. But you've, you've listened to this entire presentation, I hope. You've seen the power of what I've shown you, and you know this stuff works. You know that successful apps are using the, the system. And you might be wondering, what's the fastest way to actually do all this? And if you'd like help with it, I'd be delighted to help you. I've actually put a program for you. It's called Mobile Growth Academy, where it's divided into five different modules. And I go in detail on how to, do pro how to properly market an app. I go in, in detail in every single module and explain every step of the marketing funnel how to properly with how to properly do it with clear examples and tools and uh, best practices where i reverse engineer how the biggest apps in the world are doing it from uber to airbnb to flipboard you name it so it's divided into the essentials where you have to master the different elements and then uh, how you can implement certain tools um, you learn how to position your app competitively I go in detail in acquisition, in the activation, and then retention. So it teaches you exactly how to set up your apps for success with the right tools um, by using companies here in Silicon Valley, companies I am partnering with, so that you can have access to their tools and access to uh, tutorials on how to use their tool without you having to meet them. You'll have full training on app store optimization and how to rank your app high in the app stores. I don't know if you've uh, talked to apps or optimization agencies or individuals, 
these rates tend to be anywhere between $500 to $5,000. The average is $1,000. If you want to outsource your app store optimization to a company, you have to expect to pay a thousand bucks. I'm going to be teaching you exactly how to do these things and the, the exact tools you need to be using to rank high on the app stores. I'll also show you how to implement the exact referral system that Uber, Airbnb, and other leading apps are using to increase the referral and the virality of the app. Um, I'll be sharing with you a copywriting training and 35 ready-made proven headlines for you to copy and paste in your business. I also have a training on the best practices of onboarding and how to delight first-time users. I shared with you one way on how to do it. There are other ways to do it and tons of other examples of companies doing it successfully. I also have a training on how to explode your growth with content marketing. Now, content marketing is a great way for you to market your app 24-7. I have a full training on how to do this, how to set it up in your business. I have also a module on how to implement the best practices to retain users and turn them into long-term long loyal fans. So I have a full module on retention, which is critical for you to succeed in your business. And obviously, I'm going to share with you tons of tools, marketing tools that you can use, free tools or very affordable tools that you need to use in order to succeed in your business. Now, that's not all. What I'm going to offer you as well is direct access to me to ask me any question anytime because I know that a lot of us um, hit at that point where you need to ask questions, you need some guidance. And I'm going to offer you the opportunity to ask me any question anytime 24 7. And one more thing for the first 20 people of you, I'm going to offer a free one on one session with me. Now, that, that normally costs 550 bucks an hour. That's what I charge companies I'm consulting and I'm advising here in Silicon Valley. I'm going to offer it for free for the first 20 people who are interested in the Mobile Growth Academy. So if you think this is interesting for you, and if you want to learn how to successfully market and grow your app and avoid doing, doing costly mistake, and if you want to learn how to implement all this in the fastest way possible and beat competition, then you might be interested in enrolling in the Mobile Growth Academy. What I shared with you earlier was a value of $8,500. The Mobile Growth Academy is only at 97 bucks a month. Now, there's no long-term commitment. You can cancel any time. For this price, you have access to everything in the Mobile Growth Academy, everything I've shared with you. If you think this is interesting for you, you what you want to be doing is go here and en enroll today. If you're not interested, it's absolutely OK. There's no pressure from me. It's your choice at the end of the day. If you want to grow your app, if you want to do it alone, if you want to do it um, at your own pace, it's completely fine with me. What I'm giving you is the opportunity to work with me and let me help you grow your app faster and, and, and help you avoid doing costly mistake. So again, go on this website, bit.ly, MGA enroll, and then enroll today and um, again, for the first 20 people, I'm going to be offering a one-on-one -on -one session with me where I'm going to transform the entire business, go through every stage of their marketing funnel, and then and advise them on how they can improve it and eventually fix the entire marketing system. All right, so I hope this was useful for you guys. I have already a lot of questions I'm going to answer, but if you have more questions, please feel free to write them down in the, in the comment box, in the question box, and I'm going to be answering them on the fly. I know we have very limited time left, and I'm going to try to answer as many questions as possible. So first, if you can tell me, what do you think about this information? If there's anything that you missed, if there's anything that you'd like me to um, clarify, please feel free to write it down. And I'm really interested in your uh, feedback to understand how else I can help you and what more information I can share with you guys. Again, um, if you're interested in the, um, in the link, if you didn't note it down, I'm going to write it down right now. So um, there were some questions around WhatsApp and how it works and whether it's actually going to hurt the app or not. In fact, let me explain it again so you understand it. The WhatsApp invite is not a blast message you send out to everybody. 
it's not a spammy way of inviting people. It's actually, uh, it could be embedded on any call to action, any button, any banner. And the URL, the deep link I showed you, what we use at Tango was um, through in house ads. So house ads means ads that you would display to your own users. You don't pay for them. So we had an ad that showed up in the app. And when people clicked on the ad, it sent them to WhatsApp, their own, own WhatsApp, and they would send messages to individual people. So it's a very proactive way of inviting friends. There's no, uh, there, we're not forcing it on users. We're not um, asking them to anything they don't want to do. It's actually something they are doing because they, in, they, they want to share this information with uh, their friends. And obviously, it depends on the offer. Why should they do it? In the case of Tango, we asked them to invite their friends so they can enjoy free calls internationally. It was uh, to promote Tango out. So anyone with Tango out, they could use, uh, so anyone with Tango out, they can call anybody in the world for free. And so people wanted to tell their friends. And the idea of it was, uh, instead of sending it through SMS or email, we use WhatsApp so that um, we could leverage the network already on, on WhatsApp. Um, so that's how it works. It's not a blast email, uh, blast marketing. It's actually very effective. And I really encourage you to implement it in your business. Um, we had a question about, can we have the slides sent? Uh, I don't send slides, uh, but what we're going to have is a replay for this uh, webinar. So you can watch it again. And if you're interested, um, just wait for the email so you can receive it and you're going to start, um, uh, you can watch it at your own pace again. So which plan should we enroll in to get the offer? The, uh, the offer actually is for both, obviously. Uh, it works for the $97 plan or the $997 plan. Um, enroll in whatever you want. It's completely fine by me. Let me see if there are more questions here. So there was some question around the opt-in rates and whether this changes by um, the region in the Middle East. In fact, from the limited data that I've seen, and we don't have a lot of data on the opt-in rates in the Middle East, we have it on a global level, and it actually depends on the vertical your app in is in, uh, as you've seen in the uh, the uh, the slides before. So we haven't seen major changes based on countries or markets. What we have seen though is the timing in which you ask certain users to opt in and this hugely impact whether people are gonna actually opt in or not. The problem when people don't opt in is that you can't send them push messages. Push messages are proven to retain users. So you send them a message, obviously depend on the content of the message, but Let's assume that the content is attractive for the user and it's personalized. When you send them a message to the users, they, um, the, the, a big majority of them actually opens the app and start using it again. So unless you have good opt-in rate, you're actually impacting the retention rate of your app down the road. So to answer the question in, in a very short answer, no, we haven't seen any difference in opt-in rates in the region compared to other regions. Um, let me see if there are any questions. So the offer is uh, for the first 20 people that sign up between today and tomorrow. The reason I want to do this is I want to just talk to and work with serious people. And if you are serious about growing your app, if you're serious about uh, promoting and marketing your app successfully, if you want to learn how Uber does it, how Airbnb does it, how um, Snapchat does it, how Flipboard does it, how the major apps here in Silicon Valley are doing it, then I really encourage you to join the Mobile Growth Academy and have access to all this content and a lot more content. I could not put it all on the slides because I didn't want to overwhelm you, but there's so much content in, the, in this academy that it's going to help you at every stage of the marketing funnel. And the good thing about this, I'm always adding new content. So I have tons of modules I'm going to upload. Um, about partnerships, how to strike partnerships, how I'm promoting 
my own product, my own startup, which is the academy, with zero dollars to tens of hundreds of thousands of people, actually hundreds of thousands of apps. I'll show you exactly how I'm doing it. I'll show you exactly how I did it at Google when I was promoting Google as well, so that you learn how to market at scale, even if you have zero dollars. Um, I see more questions about the WhatsApp growth hack. Okay, let me explain it again. So, when people tap on a link or an app or a button or a banner that has the WhatsApp link in it, let's say the banner says, invite your friends on Tango so they can start calling internationally for free. This is the banner. They tap on it, they leave Tango, they go on WhatsApp, they select the people they want to send this message to, and then the message box come pre, comes pre-filled with a message that says, hey, I thought you might enjoy uh, free calls on Tango out, so you can call anybody for free around the world. Here's where you can download it, and then there's a link that links back to the store so, you can, so people can install the app. So all of this can be done in a very, very simple way with the link that I've shared with you before. It's called a deep link to, to, to WhatsApp. It works superbly. You can put any text you want, any link you want, and you can put it anywhere where there's, there's a call to action. It's a, it's a great way. Actually, what we did at Tango is uh, we placed it in different spots in the app, different ads, house ads, and then uh, with this very minimal effort and growth hack that cost us zero dollars, I was able to increase the organic installs by more than 50%. So you can imagine at the Tango scale, how many users this got us every single day. I hope this is clear for now. Um, let me see more questions. May you explain it, please? The course is not available in Arabic uh, yet. I'm working on it. But then, if you have questions, I speak Arabic. I'm Lebanese, as you can imagine. Uh, so if you have questions in Arabic, please ask me in, in Arabic, and I'm going to answer them. What is the best way to get first round budget? If I understand correctly, is how can you raise Series A or Series uh, or seed stage investment if you have a mobile app? Now, investors in general look for apps that have a solid growth rate, and a growth rate is usually around five percent week over week. So it means you should grow your app on a five percent rate every single week. So if you're at 100 users this week, next week you should have 105 users. What you need to keep in mind is that every single week you're also losing users. So your growth rate needs to offset this loss of users. So if you're getting five users, additional users next week, you should make sure that these five users are uh, so so you, you should make sure that you're not losing more than five users otherwise your growth rate is going to be negative so what investors look for is a solid app that has growth rate anywhere between five percent and ten percent week over week anything beyond that becomes a, a phenomenal growth rate anything lower than this means that you haven't figured out your uh, market fit yet and then you have to go in and fix your leakages as we've seen before uh, the VC fund where we're, we're setting up here in Silicon Valley is focused on companies in the Middle East that are trying to expand globally and uh, when it comes to the consumer space we are interested in, in growth rate of five to ten percent but also we're thinking of uh, companies that have global uh, scope we're not interested in apps that have very local uh, markets. You can start locally, but right off the bat, as you're starting your, um, your business, you need to think immediately how you can expand and how you can export in your business beyond your local markets. This is where the serious money is. This is where the serious business is in. The name of the VC is called Byram Ventures. 
I'm going to write it down so you can see it. Byram Ventures. Um, Byram Ventures, the, the VC fund we're setting up, is the first of its kind. There isn't any VC, I mean, believe it or not, there isn't any VC in the Middle East, uh, I mean, in Silicon Valley yet, focused 100% on investing in uh, Arabic startups and Middle Eastern startups. We are the first of its kind, and we are working with uh, all the different VCs locally in those markets to help identify those startups that are promising and bring them here in, in the US and help them expand. Um, let me see what else we have. So I get a question about whether I can share the slides. No, I can't share the slides. What you're gonna get is something better. It's called a replay of the, of the webinar. Any other questions you might have? Wow, okay, there's a long question here. Is there any particularities to MENA users regarding the different messages we give in, in marketing and messages, a part of psychological interaction? Same in initial tutorial. Countries in the US. Um, I'm not really sure what the question is, but if I understand correctly, it means are there any certain particular messages that fit the Middle Eastern users? or MENA users. Persuasion triggers and what you call uh, psychological interactions are actually universal. They work for everybody. And this is based on um, certain persuasion uh, principles uh, that, that work on every single human out there. There are six different persuasion principles. The most common one, and the one I use the most, is the idea of, sorry, the idea of um, uh, social proof, where you get, you show people how many others are using it as a form of proof that your app is credible. So, for example, in the in the case of Airbnb, it says twenty thousand. Uh, no, the gynecologist, sorry, example. 30,000 uh, women use our app to look for gynecologists in their area. So by using social proof, that's one form of increasing credibility and persuading users to, um, to use your app. So there are six different persuasion triggers, and I go in and detail them in the academy. So if you're interested, I encourage you to uh, enroll. Any advice or solution for funnels? Yes. Funnels are one of the most important concepts you can think of when it comes to marketing. What you need to think about the funnel is map out the different stages a user has to go through in order to start using your app on an ongoing basis, from the app discovery, the awareness, all the way to uh, using your app on a weekly basis. And the idea here is based on the fact that you need to constantly be on top of the user's mind. You have to be able to communicate with users at different stages anytime you want. And this is based on building a list of users. So you need to start thinking, how can you collect a list of users, of prospects, even if they're not using your app first, of prospects so that you can start thinking how you can convert them at every stage of the funnel. So if they're not using your app first, what is a sequence of emails you can send them, targeted email, high quality, a lot of value in those emails, so you can eventually convert them. Now, once you convert them into users, what is a sequence of emails you need to have in place in order to uh, keep them engaged and let them remember your app even after they use you on a fr for the first or second time? That's extremely important because one of the reasons why people are not using your app is they forgot about it. It's simple. Simply they forgot about it. So you have to constantly remind them. And the trick here is to automate the entire process. You don't do it manually. You can't. It's not scalable. You have to automate the entire process. Again, in the academy, I'm in detail a lot how you can set up funnels and what are the different tools you should use, free tools or low-cost tools you could use to set up the proper funnels in your marketing. But start thinking about how to build the right marketing funnels in your business as soon as possible. Uh, 
Um, what else is there? Would you give us some typical good retention rates after the first seven or 30 days? This really depends on the, on the app and on the space you're in. But if you're getting anywhere between 30 to 40% retention rate on, the, on day seven, which is seven days after the user installs the app, that's a good rate. Um, on day 30, so 30 days after the user installs the app, if you're getting anywhere between 25 and 30%, that's also generally a good rate. Anything above that is very good. In the 50s and above, that's excellent. It's hard to find apps that have such a high retention rate because of the competition, because of, their, because of the fact that so many apps are free and it's so easy to install them and simply forgot about using them again. What else is there? So one common advice I give a lot of startups is to avoid spending on marketing um, when you're early in your startup. What I see many companies do is they think they need some um, help in marketing. And the first thing that comes to their mind is, I need to go hire a marketing person, or I need to hire a marketing agency, or different agencies. It could be apps or optimization agencies, or social media agencies, or hire a marketing expert. Uh, while this is good if you have money, unfortunately, this is also very costly. What I advise you to do is, what I advise every company here in Silicon Valley to do is, Learn how to properly set up the marketing system at a low scale, test it out, make sure you improve the every stage of the funnel, fix the leakages, try to implement proven tactics, learn what are the proven tactics, implement it at a, at a, a small scale. Once you know it's working, then you can invest in scaling this marketing system. And it's not really hard to figure out how to set up the right marketing system. One option is to enroll in the Mobile Growth Academy, where I'm going to detail exactly how to do this. Another option is, it takes a lot more time because you have to do it yourself, is to go in and uh, reverse engineer every successful app you can find out there. But the idea is, do not invest in expensive marketing right off the bat, right when you're starting up, because that's going to be very costly for you. And you might as well invest this money in different places. Um, another thing is avoid spending money on advertising when you're starting up. As I said, you have to fix the leakages. What I see here, companies with very limited budgets, they go in and start spending money on Facebook, on Google, and different ad uh, channels, paid channels, so they can attract users. And then before you know it, they're spending $7,000, $10,000 to attract certain users, and these users are not retaining enough in the app. So they just burn $10,000. They don't have a system to acquire users on an ongoing basis in a sustainable and free way. And they they hit a deadline, the dead end. And they start actually freaking out because they invested so much time and so much money in building the app. And now they don't know what to do. And this is where I can come in. I can help them. I fix their funnel. I uh, set up a lot of free channels for them to acquire users. But the point is, do not invest in paid marketing unless you have a lot of budget. You're sitting on a lot of budget, whether it's your own money or somebody else's money, and you have proven that every dollar you spend, you're actually retaining users. What you need to be doing is use paid marketing to validate the headlines and validate the messages that you're sending out to users. A great indication on what works and what doesn't work is the click-through rate on the ads. So you might you might spend hundred bucks, two hundred bucks on a small campaign, and see which ads works the best, which headlines are working the best, and start uh, uh, based on the click through rate. Which one has the highest click through rate? And once you know which has the highest click through rate, take these headlines and you start using it in different places, whether it's in the app store or on the website or inside your email marketing. So avoid spending money uh, on marketing immediately and start learning how to do it properly. This is why I created the Mobile Growth Academy, because I figured there's so many companies out there, they still haven't figured out how to do proper uh, mobile marketing for their app. All right. Um, 
we have three more minutes if there's any more questions otherwise I encourage you to enroll in the um, mobile growth Academy if you're interested in expanding your business and figuring out how to uh, market and grow your app successfully the same way the big companies here in Silicon Valley are doing it if you're interested in accessing companies in Silicon Valley that you probably won't be able to access companies that help you in marketing tools that I'm uh, recommending exact tutorials that I'm getting from these companies and then putting them in the Academy so they so you can actually use them if you're interested I'll be happy to work with you and I'd be delighted actually to guide you and then show you how to properly do it and help you stand out from competition and if you're fundraising maybe we'll invest in you or I'll just advise you on how to properly reach out to investors whether it's locally there or in, in Silicon Valley here so again um, for the first 20 people I'll be spending quality time with them to help them uh, and and make sure that they have the right marketing system and what I've seen is that 99% of the cases even for big companies even for small companies obvious obviously there's so many things that can improve even one tip like the whatsapp tip can help you drive growth on a 5% rate week over week there's so many things you can think of from copywriting to the headlines, to the positioning, to different channels, to partnerships, to app store optimization. App store optimization, if you have to, actually extremely important for you to start thinking about app store optimization. You can learn it on your own, or you can enroll in the academy and then learn exactly how to do it, or you can outsource it to companies, whether it's in Dubai or in the Middle East or companies globally. Um, I've done it for 57 different languages globally at Tango. I know what it takes to do it properly. The problem I'm seeing in different markets is that companies are charging so much money to help startups in apps or optimization. It's like SEO, but for the apps. They're charging anywhere between $1,000 to $5,000 a month for this. It's that important for a business, and the challenge is that there's so little information out there that it's going to be very hard for you uh, to uh, to go through. But if you have the time to go through it, I encourage you to start implementing it as soon as possible. If you're not interested in investing money or time, I really encourage you to enroll in the Academy where I'm sharing with you the exact tools, the exact systems, how to find the right keywords, all the small hacks you can think of to win successfully in the App Store optimization play game and then how to expand it globally. I'm going to give you the tools to translate and localize the app. In fact, I have um, interviewed a company in Seattle that is now generating around uh, six figures of revenue. It's more than $100,000 a month in revenue by attracting 10 million users. And all they've done is App Store optimization. It's a phenomenal business that I interviewed and I'm putting in the academy for you to learn how they, how they did it. It's actually a, 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 an amazing story how they did it. So apps or optimization works and you start you need to start investing in it as soon as possible. So, um, oh, I have a question about AB campaigns. One sec. So AB campaigns still work? Of course. This is extremely important, actually. Everything you're doing, everything, from the pictures to the messages to the headlines to the flows to the registration process to the email subject, everything needs to be tested. You need to split test everything. And if you don't know what split testing is, um, you have a control item which is what you want to test, and then you have the variations. So let's say you have a page. What you do is you have traffic that goes to two different pages. You have the control page and a variation of the page. And what you change is one element. It could be the headline. So you start sending traffic to both, page, to both these pages, and there's a system that allows you to do this automatically. And you see which one is converting the most. 
and you know that the one that's converting the most has the better headline because only the headline change. In the app business, there are tools that allow you to, um, to test so many different things from the push messages to the onboarding flows. In fact, uh, I have a whole module on split testing different uh, onboarding flows and I'm interviewing in January a company it's a tool that allows you to do automated marketing inside your app and how to do split testing inside your app. I'm talking to them. I have a meeting with them on, on in January. We're going to be recording them and they're going to give me exactly how they you could use their tool to do all this. And it's, and it's all free. So they have a free, free version where you can implement your in your business to start split testing and automating your marketing. So split testing is absolutely fundamental. What are the sectors you focus on in Byron Ventures? Uh, we're sector agnostic. What we care for is a strong team, a, an app that has global appeal and global market that's at a stage where they want to expand. So they have, they've proven their, um, their market fit. They've proven that the, actually, the app works in a certain market and now they want to expand it globally. And the first global stage that we help them um, uh, expand to is the US markets, one of the largest and most attractive markets for investors. And we invest anywhere between 500K to a million dollars. So we're sector agnostic. We're just looking for invest for the right startups we want to invest in. More questions? Let me see, let me see. All right, so I think this is a wrap up. Let's uh, let's end it right now. It's almost an hour. It's seven a.m. here. I can't believe I was, I'm still awake. <laughs> Actually, I slept only three hours. And uh, if you have more questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be happy to answer you. I'm gonna write down my email in the chat box right now. Please don't spam me. Just write me any question you might have and I'll be happy to answer it. If you if you are serious about your business and if you want to really take your business to the next level, I really encourage you to invest in a mobile growth academy. It's only 97 bucks a month. Um, you're going to get exactly the same services I am offering to companies here in Silicon Valley and around the world where I'm consulting. Companies who are paying me $10,000 a month, you're going to get it at 97 bucks a month. And the reason I'm putting it at such a low price is that I want to attract, I want to help as many startups as possible around the world. But I want to help only the serious ones. There are so many flaky businesses out there who are just looking for um, building a business for ego purposes. I'm not interested in those. I'm only interested in helping those who are serious, who want to take their business to the next level. If you are serious and if you want to take your business to the next level, if you want to do it quickly and minimize mistakes and, and costly mistakes, actually, Enroll in the academy. You can cancel any time, and I'd be more than happy to help you. All right, so this is it. Enroll if you're interested. The first 20 people are going to have a one-on-one -on -one session with me. There is going to be a replay, and you can watch the information again. Um, I'm not sure you're going to have the same access to the offers I just gave you, but Feel free to ask me any question anytime. You have my email right now, and thank you very much. Goodbye.